right, Rising Church, well, we've reached the end of this series of our Time and Grows for this semester. I hope it's been a great semester, and I hope we've given you a lot of things to think about as we've looked at wisdom and Ecclesiastes and kind of this whole idea of uh, living life in the present based on this future outcome, so living life in reverse, and so I hope you found it insightful. I hope you felt, found it challenging. I hope it's it's done something. I hope it's accomplished something in your life, uh, and so as we kind of wrap up, I just kind of want to revisit or kind of emphasize, I guess, kind of the very end of Ecclesiastes and something that I think we might have read already, but I uh, want to read it again and hopefully maybe read it with fresh eyes and talk a little bit about kind of the whole purpose of wisdom in the first place and, and kind of explain this, this this image, this word that he uses that is probably a little bit unfamiliar to us. So uh, when you get to the end of Ecclesiastes, uh, in my, my Bible, the, the kind of the last little section is titled the conclusion of the matter. And so he's like summing up like, okay, we've just spent 11 chapters talking about, you know, wisdom and, and how to apply these things and all these things that Solomon has learned with all of his wisdom from all of his experience, from all of his experimentation, if you will, with trying like all these different things to bring meaning and purpose and satisfaction and peace and fulfillment to his life. And he gets to the end. And if you remember, we talked about earlier, he, he's kind of like this old man now and he's looking back on his life going, you know, if I could just pass on some wisdom uh, to others, here's what I would tell them based on all the stuff that I've learned uh, in the unique position that God has placed me to learn these things. And he says this in chapter 12, verse 9. He says, not only was the teacher wise. Again, the word teacher is this idea of the one who's in charge of the assembly or the gathering. And he's like, come listen to me. I'm the preacher now. And, and now I want you to listen to me, not because you have to, as I would as the king, uh, but I want you to listen to me as a father, as a preacher, and kind of listen to what I'm trying to tell you. And he says, but he also imparted knowledge to the people. So he's like, my whole point as a teacher is to impart what I've learned to you. He, talking about himself, pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. The teacher searched to find just the right words. And what he wrote was upright and true. He's basically kind of attesting everything I've written to you. It's like, it's honest. It's genuine. It's real. It's the truth. If you'll just listen to me uh, as I'm trying to help you. And he says this in the very next verse, verse 11. He says, The words of the wise are like goads. They're collected sayings like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. And now we read that, and I've read that, I'm like, oh, what? what is he talking about? Like, what's a goat and a firmly embedded nail? And like, what is this guy talking about? Has he lost his marbles? Like, what's going on here? And he's actually using this imagery from the shepherd. Uh, and a shepherd, you know, you kind of think of the Psalm 20, the 23rd Psalm and the, you know, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh, and basically, he's talking about the rod, and which was called a goad. And, and kind of a shepherd, what they would have is they'd have this, this, this staff, if you will, they'd have this rod uh, and they would have nails through it and the goad is what they would use to kind of like hit the hit the sheep and kind of like get them back on course. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, they, oh, ow, they get poked. It's kind of the same thing as the whole idea of um, spurring one another on, if you remember that passage. It's kind of the idea that he would, the shepherd would kind of like, you know, knock the sheep and then, oh, ow, and then it would like go this way. And then it would get off course again. And, oh, ow, and then it would get back on course. And the idea is that we're the sheep and, and sheep are kind of like, tend to wander and they tend to just kind of go all over the place and they don't tend to go where they're supposed to go. Uh, and that's kind of true. If you think about humanity, think about us is that's kind of what we are is we're, we may try to go the right direction, but most of the time we're just like, ah, oh, Hey, over there, you know, or Hey, we get distracted and we just kind of get lost and we get misdirected and we just kind of go the wrong direction. And so we need a shepherd who's got a goad that just kind of knocks us. Or maybe knocks not the right word, but kind of like, you know, pokes us and prods us. And that's the idea. It kind of reminds me, I don't know if you guys know the song, one of my favorite worship songs, Come Thou Fount. Uh, and you kind of get to the very end there and it kind of makes this confession that, hey, I realize that I'm prone to wander. Lord, I feel it, right? Prone to leave the God I love. It's like I'm prone to kind of wander and I'm prone to leave. And that's why we need a shepherd who's constantly like trying to like prod us and poke us to stay on the right path. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but we, we resist that. We resist the, the shepherd kind of telling us where to go. And, and kind of the reality is when he pokes and he prods us, it's painful. That's like the firmly embedded nails are the things that are in the goad. And when you get hit by a little sharp nail, that doesn't feel good. It, ow, ow, right? 
So why would the shepherd do something that's going to cause us to go, ow, ow? Is it because he hates us? Because he's mean to us? No, it's because he loves us. And he's saying, I don't want you to get off the wrong path to the right or to the left. I want you to stay on this path. And the only way that's going to happen is if I kind of like poke and prod you with this goad to keep you going the right direction. And and Solomon is now saying, that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is trying to poke us and prod us and kind of trying to get us to stay on the right course because we are prone to go the wrong direction. And when we go the wrong direction, it's going to lead to much greater pain than getting a little poke by a nail. Uh, If you fall off the cliff or if you go the wrong direction and you just end up lost, he's like, that's what it's for. And so I kind of think a lot of times when we think of wisdom, we don't think of it that way because we think wisdom is always supposed to feel good. It's always supposed to be pleasant and nice. But here in scripture, it's constantly saying, no, that's not true. Sometimes wisdom, it hurts. And sometimes wisdom, it's like, oh, ow, or poking and prodding or, you know, kind of like being disciplined a little bit. And the reality is being a disciple of Jesus, discipleship involves some pain. Because we need to be guided and we need to be directed. And the only way that happens when we are prone to wander is if the goad kind of hits us and says, no, no, don't go that way. No, no, don't go that way. Uh, Because otherwise we will end up somewhere that he doesn't want us to go. And so kind of as we're going to unwrap this a little bit in our final session, because I really want us to kind of talk about, you know, what wisdom have you gained? uh, Maybe even it was painful. That's going to help you move forward uh, with a different perspective in life. And so hopefully you have something or at least a few things that you've learned throughout this whole series. But what are those things? And some, I think a couple of good questions as we kind of wrap up to kind of get you going in the right direction is to ask yourself a couple of, of these guiding questions, which will help us determine if we are really willing to listen to wisdom. And the first one is, do you find joy in Scripture? Do you like go to Scripture because you're hungry and you understand that that's where the answer is? That's where your thirst is going to be satisfied. So when you go to Scripture, when you're reading it, you know, not just kind of going through the motions of it, but are you really kind of going into it looking like for guidance and for help and for direction and for maybe even some times where it doesn't feel good? Or are you just looking for the passages that are just going to make you feel good about what you're already doing? Or do you kind of like go to it going, hey, I really want to learn. I really want to grow. I really want this thing to kind of help instruct and guide me, uh, which leads to the second question, which is a super difficult question. Uh, If you're being honest, I want you to think back in your life. When was a time when you read something in scripture that you said, ow? Ooh. Oh. Where it kind of poked you and it prodded you in a way, and this is the key part, where you actually did something that you did not want to do. Where you went against your inclination and what you want to do. And because scripture kind of, you know, gave you a little spurring there, you said, oh, maybe I shouldn't go that way. And I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to obey it. And therefore, I'm going to do something, even if it's counterintuitive to what I want to do. Has there been a time? I think a lot of times we actually try to poke and prod scripture to tell it what we want it to say, as opposed to allowing it to poke and prod us to get us to do what he wants us to do and and what he's trying to tell us the direction to go. And so I kind of wonder for us, when was the last time you actually read something and you didn't like it, but you did it because you trusted the source. You trusted the shepherd and he's saying, don't go that way. It's going to lead to a lot of pain, a lot more pain than getting this little poke, but I'm going to poke and prod you and I'm going to try to direct you uh, like the goad. Uh, it kind of even reminds me of Titus. You know, we're in Titus, and, and one of the things uh, that he says towards the end of Titus, at the end of chapter 2, as he's encouraging Titus, Paul says, these then are the things you should teach. you got to teach these people what to do. And he uses these two words which seem like they don't go together. He says, encourage and rebuke. He's like, encourage and rebuke. you got to encourage and come along the side and kind of, you know, go this way. But he says, you also have to rebuke, which really means to convict or challenge or to reprove, uh, expose. It means to expose wrong thinking uh, and saying, no, what you're doing is not the way to go. Poke and prod and stay the course because if you get off, you're going to get lost or you're going to get hurt or it's going to lead to death and destruction in your life. So stay on the right path. So when was the last time? And so as we kind of wrap up this series, I kind of want to leave you with those two thoughts uh, about goads and are you listening? Do you go to it wanting to hear what it has to say? And when was the last time you actually did what it had to say, even if you didn't like it uh, because you trusted it? Um, And so hopefully as we kind of wrap up this series, you'll have a chance to talk through some of those things or maybe even discuss it and see what you come up with. Uh, But I hope it's been a great session. I hope you've had a lot to think about and uh, we'll see what we have in store next semester. So we'll see you next time.